Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Hello. I'm just gonna put everybody on mute. I think I, I'm not sure if I activated the function to put everyone on mute or deactivated it. <laughs> Either way, I, I don't think I was successful <laughs> in the way I set up the meeting, but I think that's okay. People will be able to unmute themselves when uh, when they're ready. Bye. Happy to Hi. Hey there, Bianca. I'm just going to put you on mute. Okay. Marina Mazur is here. Hey, Marina. How are you? Nice to see you. No, no problem, Bianca, don't worry. I tried to set up the meeting so that everyone would be on mute coming in, but I, I don't think I did it. I think I was successful in doing it. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you, Bianca. Hi, Haley, thanks for being here. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Great, thank you. Hi, Marnie, hi, Katie, thanks for being here. And I wonder if I saw Simone's name here too today. Yes, Simone. I don't know. I think you said you can't make it, but you're going to watch the recording. So, Oh, you're here for real. Oh, I just put you on mute while you said that. <laughs> can, can you unmute yourself to say hi? I'm sorry. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Good. 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 My team is on as well. Oh, fantastic. Good. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I saw some... Um, some names that have the same suffix of, of your email. So thanks for inviting everyone. Great. Hey, Brad, um, how are you? Hey, JP, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How's the new job? Oh, it's great. Fantastic. Really Good. Glad to hear. On today. Thanks. <laughs> great. Hi, Chin Yi from Singapore. Thanks for being on. I don't know how you did it. It must be um, a really strange time for you right now, time of the day. So thank you for, for making the time. Appreciate it. <coughs> Bonjour, Luz. Re bienvenue. Re bonjour. So I'm just letting people in casually now. Um, <clears throat> I've got 4.01 p.m. Eastern time on my end. So we're gonna wait a couple of minutes before we start. Anybody who just joined us, um, this uh, workshop today is participative. That means that um, I'm gonna be asking some questions. I'm gonna ask you to participate, share your opinions, share your expertise, share your questions. So please make great use of the Zoom chat. And you're quite welcome to use the video function as well if you wanna have cameras on. It's always lovely to see you all. If you can't have your camera on, that's okay too. I'm still glad that you're here, but, um, but I, I'd um, love to see I, you. I'd love to see you. Oh, hey, Tanya. Oh, hey, Tanya. Nice to see you. I don't know why I'm getting some feedback on your line, but anyways, I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for being here. Hi, Julia. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. And I see Brooke Smart is here as well. Hi, Brooke. And Joan, hi Joan, nice to see you. Okay, so we're just gonna wait another 30 seconds and um, I'm gonna share the slides with you in the Zoom chat that you can um, follow after this session. Um, because we're doing such a practical exercise together today with creating your own challenge card, the slides do include some instructions that you might want to steal if you uh, want to do this uh, activity again with your students. So um, that's one thing that you can go check out that I just said in the Zoom, Zoom chat. Okay. 
Okay, great. So Jasmine, I think this is your first official SparkPath uh, webinar. So maybe you can take a, a moment to say hi, hello, uh, and introduce yourself to, to people who haven't met you yet. Sure. Hello, everyone. My name's Jasmine. Uh, I'm the community coordinator here at SparkPath. So I help to set up a lot of accounts and I get the opportunity to work with lots of people like you and some of you here today. So nice to see everyone and meet those of you who I haven't met yet. Thanks, Jasmine. I'm really glad that you're you're here. Um, hey, and Camille, I, you've been here for a while, but I don't know how many people on the call have met you yet. So do you want to say hello as well? Yeah, totally. I think I might have only jumped into one other webinar. For some reason, I never would be able to go to them. But um, hello, everybody. I'm Camille. I'm the project manager here at SparkPath. So I do a lot of work um, with some of our some of our clients, similar to Jasmine, but also the amelioration of our digital tool, always making sure it's up to par and as best as it can be. So we recently actually just finished a project uh, regarding accessibility with our digital tools to so make it accessible and usable for all users, which is super cool. So we'll be yeah, I like, I like that project. Can I, so can I put you on the spot? Can you say like one or two more things to people on the call uh, about what that, that project was all about? For sure. So um, there are these guidelines that exist for regarding web accessibility uh, standards for you know any users who use them with screen readers who have um, either visual impairment or audio impairment. So we aim to make our tool more accessible um, and meet the current standard, which are called WCAG 2.1 AA. So to do that, we collaborated with an external auditing firm as well as with our web developers to remediate our tool, find any things that were compliant and then make them compliant so that the new and ameliorated tool now offers options like an accessible PDF that can be uh, generated to work with screen readers, for example, um, buttons that can be moved around with the tab function, for example, that kind of thing. Thank you, that's great. Thanks, Camille, yeah. for leading that project. It's something we're quite proud of because it really aligns with our, our vision and our mission for a company. We want everyone to have a, meaningful path and a career in front of them. So this project made a lot of sense for us to, to take on and thanks to me for playing a big role in it. We're saying hello today to a bunch of new people that we haven't met before. Uh, you're, you're very welcome to this call. Um, the idea behind these uh, meetings that we do every couple of months is to uh, get insights from the community that uses the challenge mindset and the challenge cards and uh, share some insights back to you of what we're hearing uh, from educators so that you can be even greater at what it is that you do. So thank you for making the time to be here. Uh, I'm thrilled that you're here. I think one interesting part of this is if we can uh, all share with each other who's here. Um, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is um, in the Zoom chat, can you share a few uh, things about yourself? So someone already took the lead here. Uh, Beth, I love your intro. It's very simple here. So. Do you guys see in the Zoom chat how Beth introduced uh, herself? I'm from Viterbo University in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And um, I would love to know um, from other people, uh, where are you? What kind of work do you do? So can everyone take a moment just to introduce themselves in the chat? And I think that's gonna help us uh, get to know each other uh, better. All right, thanks, Christine. Hey, Valentina. Hey, Ellen, nice to see you. Great, hi. Chris from Ohio State Brook, Tulsa, yes. Hey, Larry, Hajar, fourth year finance at the University of Ottawa, awesome, thanks, welcome, Hajar. Wow, I can't keep up with all the intros, I love it, thank you. This is great, please keep it up. Hey Beth, welcome to the call. We're just introducing ourselves and the messages here. It's fantastic, thank you. And for those of you who just arrived, I'm gonna share the link to the slides in the Zoom chat just one more time. Hey Danielle, Marnie. Okay, great, fantastic. Okay, Jasmine, Camille, what do you think? We're ready to go, ready to start? 
Let's do it. So I'm going to share the slides on my screen, but you're welcome to follow um, whichever way that you prefer on my screen or using um, the slides directly. Uh, first thing I want to share is that um, uh, I am writing a book about the challenge mindset, and uh, I've reached a milestone that I am very proud to share. It's a very, you know, initial early milestone, so I want to be conservative with my enthusiasm, but it matters. I wrote a first rough draft. Um, there's about 30,000 words in this little book. When I say rough, I mean, it's really rough. Like I read the first chapter and I thought, wow, this is really bad. And then I read the second chapter and I thought, well, okay, no, this one's okay. So anyways, I'm making progress and uh, it's something that I'm hoping uh, we'll be able to publish in the year 2022. And of course, you'll be the first ones to know when that book uh, is out. So today, what I want to talk about is the value of exploring over the value of deciding in the world of careers. We're going to do an activity together called creating your own challenge card. I'm going to explain why and how. Uh, and then I want your insights on the value of this activity for the people that you serve. There's a huge diversity of people on this call. Some of you work with middle school. Some of you work with graduate students. Um, and you're all going to be able to interpret and use this exercise in your own unique way. All right. Why deciding over exploring? Uh, this is the opposite of what I just said, isn't it? Well, in my read, this has been the defining characteristic, the defining verb of the world of career development. Uh, it's been the dominating paradigm. We have to help people decide. Um, some of you might know that, uh, you know, we also speak French, you know, a bunch of us on this call. And I want to tell you the name of the careers class in high school in French. It is choix de carrière, which means career choice or choice of career. Did you hear that language, choice of career? It sounds like the name of the class is choose one career. So that's how dominant this paradigm of deciding really is. It's embedded in our culture. We ask young people, what do you want to be when you grow up? So they also prioritize deciding over exploring. The word exploring has a negative connotation. Ex exploring in some cases sounds like drifting aimlessly with no purpose. It sounds much more exciting to tell your grandmother at the Christmas dinner table that you know you want to be a lawyer, you've decided, that's official, it's prestigious. <laughs> However, for so many reasons, I think that this way of looking at the world is dead. It's over. Hmm. One could argue that this model, deciding we're exploring, it didn't work that well in the past. Was it really the case that young people chose one thing that they would do for the rest of their lives. We can even say with greater certainty that the model is not working today. I mean, to really decide, young people would need to know the options. Like, what are the options? First of all, there's too many options to keep track of. Plus, they're going to, you know, work 5, 10, 15 jobs over the course of their lives. So is it really about deciding one thing? We know that the world of work is changing. We know that people will change. So with all this change, prioritizing, prioritizing deciding is like we're ignoring that this change will really happen. But all signs are pointing to more change in the future, faster change in the future. Change is such a big part of careers. And what is deciding really when you don't know what you're choosing? It makes me think of this quote from John Crumbles, who had a fantastic role, role in shaping the world of career development. He, he said, asking teens to pick a job title that they've never tried out is like asking them to name a future spouse before allowing them to date. I think we're not asking them the right thing, right? And this is the case when we say deciding when people don't even know what the job is really about, right? This week, I was working with a group of gifted students at a local high school here in Ottawa and Canada. And half of them, 10 out of the 20, are interested in medicine, medical school. Um, and my question to them is how much pressure 
how much um, influence have they had from the outside world to push them towards medical careers just because they were deemed gifted in schools. It's kind of a, it, it, it started a really fascinating discussion with them about um, what is being gifted, you know, and how much pressure are they receiving? I like Katie said, that might've been easier than my dating experience. I like that, that's good. Um, oh, good, please use that in ne your networking class, John Crumbles. I bet you he has a lot of quotes, but that's my favorite one of his. Okay, so uh, we said deciding versus um, uh, exploring, that's over. So I want to help you flip it. Rather, let me change that. I want you to help me flip it. I've already decided to this, I've, I'm committed. I'm very deep into this. Some of you have been doing this type of work for years and you are as well. Some of you are seeing this for the first time. If it's your first time, I'm inviting you, you specifically. The model that we need to equip students with is about exploring. Exploring now in the short term and preparing for lifelong exploring. So this is how we're gonna help people grow uh, for their careers. This is how we're gonna make up for the fact that our systems, you know how people complain like, oh, the system is broken. You know, we're not graduating enough students from uh, mm -hmm. universities and colleges. We're not, uh, our, our, our youth are underemployed. There's a skills gap, the systems are broken. Listen, you're right. I wanna remind you that there's no one coming to fix these systems. It's not gonna happen tomorrow that magically all of these in, independent interdependent systems will magically align and we're gonna finally help youth reach their potential automatically, systematically at 100% rate. No, we need you. You are the dream enablers that fill the gaps in the system. And we're gonna make up for these gaps in the system by helping students explore in a very meaningful way. To help us do this, we built a very straightforward tool called the challenge cards. This tool, the challenge cards, is the easiest way to teach the challenge mindset, this approach for the world of work where we prioritize exploring. And in the short term, it gives students a new way to see the world. It gives them great, exciting avenues to explore. It gives them a new language. It gives them images that stimulates their creativity. It helps them explore in action, in practice, uh, choosing some of their favorite options to dig in deeper. But long-term, it does more than that. Long-term, the challenge mindset gives young people an approach to navigate a dynamic, ever-changing world of work. Some of you are working with students who will work for 60 years. Is that heavy? How, how does that feel to hear that, right? We're extending longevity, people's longevity. Uh, long pe uh, young people will live longer, most of them. And uh, retirement ages are increasing. And this is going to keep increasing. So some of them will work a long time. So you want them to be ready to systematically adapt along the way. And meeting you might be the main reason that they're able to do that. So we want them to look for new challenges, problems, and opportunities along the way so they'll be ready to adapt and create. So a lot of you on this call, you've already done this. You've already used the uh, challenge cards uh, to be able to help uh, your students thrive. So I want to find out just like how many of you have done this already. So let me uh, throw a little poll here that you can fill out. I want to know who's new, who's done this a lot, and... Um, can you see my poll there? Yeah, great. Some people are already answering. So I'd love to, to get everyone's answers on where you're at with using the challenge mindset and challenge cards. So it looks like a really good balance so far. We've got one pro. Any more pros? Pro is a self-assessment, by the way. You can call yourself a pro when you're ready. Can you see that? Can't see the poll. Oh no, that's too bad. Haley, how come you can't see the poll and other people can? Jasmine, can you see the poll? What did you rate yourself, Jasmine? I'm a pro. <laughs> You're a pro. Oh, well done. 
That's good. Beth, oh, you can't see the poll either? Oh my God, half the people can't see the poll. How, how, how come that's the case? How, how come half people can see it? I'm on the Eventbrite link, not the Zoom. Can we send the Zoom link so I can see the poll? Hajar, you're not on the Zoom. You know what? Jasmine's gonna send you a message directly, Hajar, to troubleshoot. Uh, Valentina, I like that you self-assess as a pro as well. No poll on my end. Hey, sorry about the poll working for half the people. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, Julia, so sorry. Um, and what about the people who did see the poll? How did you, how did it come up? Oh, you're in the Eventbrite app, not Zoom itself. Danielle, love the insight. I never even know you could do that. We're going to research that before the next time it comes up. Manon can't see it either. Cool. I think there you were two options when you were signing in. There was join via Zoom and then there was like a join the event, which was through Eventbrite. So maybe that's where it came from. Fascinating. Okay, good. Listen, I'm not going to waste your time with that. Uh, I'll find out in the future what that means uh, to be in um, the Eventbrite app. But, but I'll give you the results of the poll to everyone, okay? Uh, share results. Um, so uh, I'm going to read them out loud. We got three people. We, we only have 11 votes. So you're only 11 out of 50 who saw uh, the, this poll, okay? So uh, three people said not yet, five said a little bit, two said a lot, one said pro. So uh, that's useful, okay? Uh, this is small sample size, we got one fifth of the group. Uh, so we're gonna work on that uh, uh, the next time. So the reason I'm asking you is because uh, I wanna talk about what happens after you choose the challenge card so that you get the most uh, out of the experience. So let me go right back to my shared screen. Um, okay. So after the card sort, uh, let's say someone chooses their top challenges, right? They've gone through the card sort either with the physical card sort or the digital card sort. They pick their favorite stuff. You're going to want to help them make meaning out of their decision. Okay. You want them to reflect on why they picked the card. So you could ask them, tell me why you chose this card. What difference do you wanna make in the world when it comes to this challenge? How do you wanna solve it? What skills do you have that can help? And what connections can you make between your top challenges? Uh, let me just see, Vivienne, if I can. If I can. Sorry. That's okay, that's not your fault. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so. Um, all these questions are in our facilitator guide. So if you don't have our facilitator guide yet, please let us know. You can let Jasmine know in the chat. We can share that with you. But these are all the types of questions that we're going to recommend that you ask. So uh, the goal is for really for students to feel energized and empowered about their future so they can take meaningful action. So having done the cards really helps them with that. But what do you do immediately after the card store, after you've helped people make meaning out of their choices? Well, it depends on the problem you want to solve with your audience. So let's say I've got three different types of people, and this might represent a few of the cases that you help. Uh, the first one we've got here is Job Jasmine. Uh, so Job Jasmine, she needs to get a job, right? So the problem we want to help her solve is um, we want to help her to help understand what are the challenges uh, that uh, she can work on, okay? So um, a couple of people are asking for the facilitator guide and uh, Jasmine, you'll be able to share that in the chat. So what you do next after the card really depends on the, the, the person's problem, the issue that you're trying to help them fix. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to say. And then I wanted to explain why creating a challenge card could be a helpful exercise for many of these people. That's the theme of our workshop today. So why would I ask Job Jasmine to create her own challenge card. Wouldn't that be slowing her down from applying to her job? I think differently. I think that for Jasmine to be able to create a challenge card that explains the problem that the company she's applying to is trying to solve would deepen her understanding of what that company is trying to do. and would make her a much stronger applicant. It would allow her to understand which people she needs to connect with at that company before working there, once she starts working there. It would also help her craft a stronger 
application through her cover letter. So for example, after creating a challenge card with her cover letter, she, she could explain, here's the problem that I think your company is trying to solve. And here's how I can help. Did you all hear that? That's a different cover letter, isn't it? The traditional cover letter has the same format. It's just a story about you. And you send that to a person that doesn't know who you are and doesn't care. Why do I say that? Well, because they're reviewing 500 cover letters. How can they care about each one? What if you wrote a cover letter that was different, that said, here's the problem that your company is trying to solve and here's how I can help. Wouldn't that differentiate you from all the other candidates? Wouldn't it show your business acumen, your labor market knowledge, your understanding of that company? And once you've got some precision into what they're trying to do, you could uh, more clearly articulate how you can help and that's the point of an application, isn't it? Articulating how you can help. I think that can make a huge uh, difference. Great. So we had a lot of good traction with everyone wanting to see the facilitator guide. Thanks for your comments with that. And um, uh, Jasmine uh, sent it in the chat. So that's one example with Jasmine. But I don't think that creating a challenge card is just for her. What about Alex? Alex is a student who says, I have no idea what I want to do. I feel lost. And if we help Alex create a challenge card, it would help him combine his interests, what he likes, stuff that you know, lights him up with the desired impact he wants to have on the world, real labor market information. So it would help him create. It would help him continue to explore and get deeper in a specific area. And you could even do this with someone like Linear Lucy. She's the type of person that thinks, you know, what can I do with my major? If I study biology, I can become a biologist. We want to show her that there's so many different ways to contribute in the world. And you can decide how you want to contribute. Your studies in biology might be really applicable to creating legal patents for emerging biotechnology. Did y'all get that? Like, that's the type of interdisciplinary connections that people like Lucy struggled to make, but that we can help her make. So helping her create a challenge card could help her do that. So to summarize, the reason that we would get people to create their own challenge card is to better solve the issue that they came to see you with. So here are some great reasons to do this activity. You want students to practice the challenge mindset, learning by doing. Sorting the cards is a great way to start, but when you create your own challenge card, you prove that you can look at the world through the lens of challenges, problems, and opportunities. And that's a lifelong skill. And the best way to learn is by doing something, isn't it? So that's one of the great ideas to do it. Now, second, it would allow you to create a challenge that's even better suited for you. So let me make a comment about that because when I first went into the classrooms with the first edition of the challenge cards, there were 24 cards you know, real shiny right off the printing press. I was so excited to use them in the uh, classroom. And I, I loved it, by the way. Like I was looking at the students, everyone was immersed in the, you know, some of the world's greatest challenges. No one was on their phone. It was a beautiful moment until at the end, this one young lady, she said that uh, you forgot one. Like she was saying there's a missing challenge card. And that was tough for me because obviously she's, much younger than I am. I had spent a long time researching and reading and try to choose the best options. Um, but you know what I realized in that moment is that, well, first of all, she was right. The challenge that she brought up like wasn't in the deck and it was a great challenge, okay? And then I realized, you know what? Like, this is not a problem with my deck. This is actually the point of the exercise. This young woman can now articulate her view of the world of work through the lens of challenges. And there's so many benefits to that. So that's the point. So that's why I wanted to do a whole <laughs> webinar for this activity, because I think this is the point to be able to equip students with this type of knowledge about the world of work. Let's say you, some of you, some of you are private career coaches and you're actually trying to help your clients get a promotion. Where am I moving up internally in the organization? Well, a good way to move up in the organization is to solve progressively bigger and bigger problems. Um, so they could create their own challenge card for problems they want to solve within their organizations. All right, that was my pitch to you for why, for the value. I just want to check in now. Are, what questions, comments, 
reactions do you have so far before we dive into the how? Okay, done, good, great. I think you're still with me, ready to move on. Let's keep going. Um, so we're at the how. Step one, pick a challenge card or a topic of interest to you. Step two, create a mind map with your card, your topic in the middle. And now let me give you a preview of what's coming two minutes. I want everyone in this call to play, to participate, to do this together. Can you, if you have the challenge cards in front of you, can you pick your favorite challenge card now? Do you remember it from memory? Or if you don't, just pick any topic that's of interest to you. I'm going to give some environmental examples because that's a topic of interest for a lot of the students that we help. And then we're going to show you what a mind map looks like. So that's the first step. So I don't know how you want to do this. Are you a, a tech person and you're going to do this in paint or in Word or some other software? Are you a low tech person that uh, is going to do this in a journal? I like to write everything in a journal. So this is where I'm going to do my mind map. Um, all right, let me check in with Jasmine and Kemi. I want you guys to do this as well. Are you going to do it on your computer or on paper? I might do it on paper. Nice. Great. Kemi? I don't have the paper with me, but if I can Oh, my them, gosh. Do you don't have paper with you? I came in the prepared for the you. webinar. You should have I'm known. The, I'm in the room beside you. Come get a piece of paper from, from me. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you one right now. I don't know if she's actually going to come. We'll find out. Okay, so um, for everyone else, um, yeah, grab your equipment. Let's let's get started. Um, you know how a mind map works. You've probably already done one. I'm going to show you some examples. The idea is let's brainstorm as many ideas as you can about the topic. And um, you can write down what interests you about it, what are the opportunities that are available there, uh, et cetera. Great. Uh, Sam, we always record. No, we don't always record. I forgot to record. That's, did I forget to record? Yes. No, I didn't forget to record. What up? Yeah, sure. Great. And you can grab a pen on my desk too. Already. Great. Um, but yes, it is available. I had a feeling for a second that I didn't record. Okay, so let's get started. What's a mind map? Just to show you if you haven't seen this yet. Um, here's one. I just Googled some mind maps for the environment. Imagine a student doing this. They, the challenge they want to work on is having a better earth. And then you might look at them in desperation like, well, what do you mean a better earth? Like, let's define that. So, so this is the activity. We're going to do it. You're going to make your own challenge card about creating a better earth. But let's start off by brainstorming first. Let's get creative. What does that make you think of? Well, maybe a better earth for them is saving energy. It's, um, it's about meat consumption. It's about saving water. It's about the three R's. Good. Now we're brainstorming. This person in the middle said it's about peace. Peace is an achievable miracle. And they had tangents about global change, achievement history. Fantastic. Look at this one, really technical. This person, the challenge they want to work on is how can we create better environmental energy sources, right? To move beyond uh, petroleum, uh, for example, maybe that's their idea, right? So they just literally brainstorm. I don't even want to say in a narrow way, but they just looked at energy sources. This is way less dicursive than these, but this doesn't make it worse, okay? This is a fine idea brainstorming, putting out their words. Look at this one. How can we help people connect with nature? Have you ever heard of like um, the Japanese have an expression for forest bathing? I heard what I read about forest bathing in Japan is the idea of just walking in the forest has documented clinical health benefits. So that's the first thing I thought about when I saw connecting with nature. But they looked at all these different elements of it. So this is a mind map. You know what a mind map is. I've given you some examples. Now it's time to get to work. I'm going to give you three minutes to make your own mind map of your topic. And um, once you're done, I'm going to ask people to share in the chat what was your topic. Uh, you're not going to share your whole mind map, but I want to hear what was your topic. Did you pick the environment as well? Uh, are you interested in something else? Is it technology, health? Um, something personal to you, something related to your job, something different. I'm gonna look for everyone to share their examples. So before we get started, do you have any questions for me? I think we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna give you three minutes to do that now and then I'll check in with you in three.
So I'm trying some music as we go. I made the music. Can you hear it? Yes or no? And also, is it helpful or not helpful? I can hear it very, like, not, not very loudly, but it doesn't bother me at all. So I think it'd be helpful. Jasmine, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Keep the music or let it go. Thumbs up, Brooke. Okay, thank you. Okay, so can I give you another 30 seconds to wrap up? And uh, with this last moment, would you like to think about some wild or different ideas that you haven't thought about yet? Give it that last extra push and then we'll get back together um, in the chat. All right, great. Thank you for participating, playing along. So I'd love to hear from you, from a few of you in the chat, 
could you let me know what you picked? What was the main area, the challenge, the theme, the topic? Could you share it with me in the chat? Julia, using business for good. I've got Diane, equity and inclusion. Haley, I did mine on mental health awareness. Great. Beth, help people reach their potential. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Ellen, female empowerment. Great. Create meaningful experiences for others. Oh, that's good. Simon, you have the same as Leanne. Uh, Caitlin, help people who need you. Help people reach their potential. Jasmine, plant-based lifestyle. So that's great. Design the education system. Help teams achieve. Oh, love the ideas. Keep them coming. This is great. Adama, reverse engineer the brain. Terrific. Brad, similar for you. Katie, prepare future leaders. That's great. Okay, good. Lovely. That gives me a sense of what you were working on, what you were thinking about, and um, uh, what you did uh, during that time. So let's go to our next steps about creating a um, challenge. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So the next step I'd recommend is for you to pick your top three to five areas of interest in your mind map. So that might mean your favorite words, your favorite subcategories, what interests you. These are the words that will help you with the fourth step, which is creating your challenge card title. Some of you, you've got it already, a clean title that you already put into the chat, but some of you are creating a new title for the first time. And the hint I wanna share with you for this part of the activity is that it should answer how can we. So you'll notice that to answer how can we, you need to have a verb included in your challenge card title. And I also think you should keep it short between three and eight words so that it would look nice and clean and neat if you were to put it on an actual uh, challenge card. So let me give you uh, a moment to do that now for those of you who uh, don't have uh, a challenge card title just yet. And let me know if you have any questions about that in the chat. For those of you who already have your title, I suggest you move on to step number five, which is create an inspiring image for the front of the card. So if you have the physical cards with you, or if you've seen them before, you might remember that the front of the card has uh, the title at the bottom, a short title, and it has a picture uh, on the front of it. And I want to tell you about how we went about designing these pictures. I like to use the word blurry. What that means is that we didn't use photos that were too, uh, we didn't use photos, okay? Photos would be too crisp and taken too literally. We wanted to leave it blurry so that it would take uh, people's imaginations down different paths. When somebody chooses the card, how to protect society from crime, some of them think about policing, some of them think about cybersecurity. And we picked images and icons that would reflect the diversity that's possible in the challenge. So I really like to encourage people to think in icons. And I've adopted this practice ever since building the challenge cards. I literally Google the word icon, right? So um, Haley, if you pick mental health awareness, I would Google the words mental health icon or icons. And I'm gonna use those types of images for inspiration because they tend to have some abstract nature and quality to them which makes it a more powerful challenge card. Now, if you have a student that really wants to use a picture, something specific, I think it's okay to let them go down that route. But in general, I'm gonna give you this advice because you might be creating your own challenge cards and showing them to students. And if that's the case, you want them to be able to read into them and making it blurry is a really helpful way of doing that. So maybe I'll ask for some of your feedback on that. Like Jasmine, how did I do in explaining that blurry quality? Is that clear for you or still fuzzy? I think it, it makes sense in terms of not, um, you know, you, you don't want to give away too much to, to the student. You want to leave it open for their interpretation as well, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I think we really prioritize uh, analytical thinking in careers instead of uh, intuition. And the truth is, is that as humans, we need both. Um, this analytical thinking comes from the deciding paradigm that we talked about earlier in the webinar. And I think that in the ex exploration uh, stage or phase or um, action, intuition is very, very powerful. And intuition is very powerful in a scenario where there's so many limitless options that exist. It's useful to have your intuition guide you. And I find that if we had pictures, literal pictures on the front of the cards, uh, students wouldn't be able to use their intuition as much. They'd just take things too literally. Thanks, Camille, for adding your creative uh, challenge cards of helping eliminate the fear of judgment. That's a really good one. I'd love to hear more about that. Okay, um, so we've talked about the, uh, the different steps, creating your title, creating an inspiring image. Let me share the next steps with you. In the activity, creating your challenge card, I recommend uh, that next students research their cards to create the information on the back. We're not gonna do this together today, but I will tell you about how to do it. The format that I would typically use is the, the back of the card on the top would include context, maybe examples, practical um, applications or practical uses uh, that bring the challenge card to life. And then the bottom part of the challenge card would include future opportunities. And this to me was the funnest part to write because I would, I would search the future of for any topic. What's the future of biology? What's the future of um, biotechnology? What's the future of cybersecurity? What's the future of policing? What's the future of writing policy? What's the future of uh, international relations? And this led me to so many insightful uh, papers, working groups, thought leaders. And this is when I was able to get deeper in all of these career areas. And that allowed me to write the challenge cards with a lot more ease because um, obviously you know that I didn't you know, come up with the content on my own or dream it. I simply looked at the people who were lead, leading the way. What are people saying about what's possible in the next 10, 20, 30 years in these areas? And um, I think it's a fantastic reflection for all students to have. If you have a student that wants to go into artificial intelligence, it's worth understanding what's going to happen in this space in the next five to 10 years. We know that the point of this is not predicting. It's about imagining what's possible so you can prepare for future scenarios. I'll give you another practical example that's really useful. Software development. Some people who uh, operate in the deciding paradigm, the way that they see career development, it's that um, it's about connecting students with the hottest jobs. That's how career development works is we just got to get on the best jobs. And that way of looking at the world, in my opinion, is very short termist because um, they're the hot jobs today. And the only point about the only point of innovation in the world of work is to change that. Let me explain what I mean. Software developers are so well paid today. It's such a hot job market. They can make salaries between starting 70,000 all the way to 300,000, depending on your level of seniority. This is so well paid, but this is a huge hindrance to companies that have to pay this. So how can you innovate? Well, what if you invented no code coding. What do I mean by that? Well, no code coding is coding for people who don't know software development. What if you could make it easy for them to create and build their own things online? The world of no code coding is thriving right now. There are millions upon millions of dollars invested in no code coding because to adjust for the inflation, the hot job of software developer. And this is a cyclical nature of the world of work. That's how innovation happens. So that's one of the reasons I don't promote this idea of just sending people to hot jobs because how long will the jobs be hot for? It's better to teach them a way of looking at the world that's long-term. And the reason I'm telling you that now is because if you're entering trans the field of translation, for example, you wanna know what's the future of translation and understand how much money is spent on automating translation. If you wanna enter the, um, 
world of software development, you should know how software development evolved, fragmenting, changing, uh, being fought against, because that's going to give you a really unique lens for you to show up to college with, for you to show up with to the world of work. Okay, I hope that wasn't too deep. I hope that was a useful example uh, that uh, uh, brings this concept to life, the value of creating your own challenge card and searching the future of your specific field. So let's wrap this up because I wanna get your comments on the value of this activity. The last step is use it. Use the new challenge card you just created. And how do you use the challenge card? Well, you gotta go back to the problem. Are you working with Job Jasmine or Linear Lucy? Each one of them has a different issue and that challenge cards will help them solve that issue. And this will involve exploration, right? So you've got a challenge. You're likely to help someone go through these steps. Help them research companies that are working on this challenge card they created, the jobs that exist there, and what you need to learn to be able to do that. So you might have a student tell you, well, wait a minute. What do you mean companies that are working on the challenge? I just invented this challenge card. How can that be possible? And um, with the high school students that I'm in, I could really see it in their faces this week. They really feel so lonely. They really feel like I'm the only person in the world that wants this. I'm the only person in the world that likes this challenge. I'm the only person that doesn't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. But the truth is that they're wrong. The challenge card that they created, their ambition, there are so many people already operating in that space, an adjacent space, a related space, they just haven't found them yet. So to me, that's simultaneously very encouraging. Wow, I got to go find my people. Who can guide me? And it's discouraging because they don't know how to find people. But I think that's your expertise. Like, Julia, the first time I met you, I know you think like that. Like, you know how to find people, but you also know that your students don't know at all how to find people, right? Am I right? Yeah. So we got to teach them how to do that. So I, I really think if they make their own challenge card, some people are going to fight you. What do you mean companies and people working on this? There aren't any. Wait, let me show you how to look for that stuff. And we've already done a webinar on this before. Uh, and you can, you, you can find all the recording of our uh, webinars on our YouTube channel. Jasmine, would you mind sharing like, the link to our YouTube channel so people can subscribe? But what we shared the last time about it, it, a really simple way to do that is just Google the title of the challenge card, like, you know, companies that increase sustainable energy. And you're going to find a lot of good stuff there. You know, it, you know, could you find companies that help eliminate the fear of judgment? I don't know. I mean, I think you have, might have to do some more digging and thinking around that. So that might not work in that circumstance, but there are different ways of, of, of doing that. Okay. So you're helping a student explore, you're helping them solve the problem. Here are my uh, debrief questions for you. I wanted to get your thoughts on this activity and the value that it has. I couldn't think of uh, um, just one question to ask you. So I'm going to ask you uh, a lot of them. Here are three questions that I can ask you and I'll read them out loud. And then I'd love it if somebody would volunteer and go uh, off uh, mute to tell me what they think. So I want to know what did you like the most and the least about the activity of creating your own challenge card and how I framed it? What will be the most difficult part of the exercise for your students? And three, how would you use this activity with your students? So I'm gonna uh, find out from you comments, questions, reactions, and answers to these questions. I'd love to hear from you. You don't have to answer all three. You can start with just one is fine. Maybe I can uh, ask you, Brooke, uh, if you don't mind, like uh, one of these questions resonates more with you, um, more than the others. And uh, maybe you could tell us in what context you think that students could do this. I'm just kind of like wrapping my brain around all of it and thinking about the kids we use this the most with. So I feel like we implement the challenge cards the most with our kids who are really struggling to figure out what they wanna do um and so we implement the, especially the kids like the anxious Alex I almost sent something in the chat I'm like these are the ones these are the ones that I feel like these cards really resonate with especially on our end of things it kind of gives them a they are the ones who struggle seeing the point from where they're at and where they're trying to go 
So giving them of where you're trying to work for and how can we back into that gives them kind of that action plan of how to step into it. And so I think, you know, you could use this, this activity in specific to really kind of get them to generate their own vision of what that is. So maybe like we talk about um, how are your top three connected? How is there anything that's different? You know, trying to get them to draw some conclusions. And I kind of like the idea of challenging them instead of them trying to select their top one, okay, create your own. And then could you run them through these? And I think that would be a really powerful moment for them to take even more ownership over, okay, where what is your action plan? Where are we trying to get you to? Who is doing those things? And I think that can be a really empowering moment. It's kind of like what you talked about with Julia, like they have to learn how to, like what to look for. And, and I think that once you can get them rolling on it, they start to investigate in it. I don't know, it's really cool to watch, so. Good, I'm, I'm glad. And yes, I think it's cool to watch too when you see, like you use the word empowering. So I think about that student that you talked about, Anxious Alex, and I, th I think he or she feels powerless. You know, they might think, I've got nothing, to, like, you know, I've got nothing to offer to the world. Some of you have told me, like, people come to career services and say, I'm sorry, I haven't figured this out. Like, they're apologetic about it. And you're helping empower them, like, give them a huge sense of power. At first, by knowing that the world needs them, by seeing all the challenge cards, but, but then having the power to create their own card, to me, that could be a very empowering activity for people. Thanks, uh, Brooke, for sharing that. Julia, did you want to go next? Um, I actually, she kind of said one of the things that I was thinking was um, essentially to almost before they even turn the cards over to take their top three and figure out how those combine, um, possibly with the backs, but to see how those combine for them to be able to create that, that challenge card to start exploring and putting in the mind mapping before you get I, I, all off the top of my head, but before they even go to the point of finding companies and all of that, so that by the time they get to the finding companies, they're really working on their own card per se. Yeah, great, thank you. I'm just gonna read some of the comments from the chat. Fidelma said, uh, it gives them power to be in charge. Um, and you, uh, Diane says, you like the limitless possibilities, um, empowering. I mean, so the difficult part is them to think outside their box and make the paradigm shift to a new way of thinking. You bet. And I think that if you scaffold it the right way, you know, maybe with the, 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 the TEDx talk as an introduction, step one, we'll just watch this. Step two, play the game, the cards, choose one, you know, one, do I like it? Do I not like it? It's very simple. And then I think creating your own challenge card is a big jump, but if you scaffold it the right way with like a mind map, pick your favorite stuff, I think it's possible uh, to help them get there. So that also opening their mind, improving lateral thinking, best to model one together. That's great. Caitlin said, I really like the concept of mind mapping around the challenge cards and helping students build their understanding of the cards. It helps build out abstract concepts they may struggle with conceptualizing. Good point. It slowly builds and grows their understanding of the challenge. Fantastic. Andrea, I like the idea a lot because I feel like it adds a layer of depth to doing the card sort. It really allows the students to take ownership that's funny that you said that, that word too, same as um, Brooke. I love the mind map and I think they will really enjoy this once they dive into it, great. Leanne, you have to go, but you're in Australia. I, I don't even know what time it is in Australia right now, but I'm really glad that you were here. Oh, that's awesome. Andrew, are you gonna use this with your, in your class? Love it. Diane, I feel like the experience with the cards first, then creating their own card later would be effective. We struggle with having enough time to do these as groups in our school. That makes sense, yeah. I think uh, for those of you who are in K-12, this could be done in any subject, right? Subject area. I think the most difficult part of showing them tangible jobs will allow them to work on their challenge. They get stuck thinking in terms of the, what do I wanna do? You're right. Yeah, they can definitely get stuck there. What's the TED, uh, Jasmine, could you send the TEDx talk just so that Beth um, has access to it? We did a, a, a TEDx talk on the challenge mindset. Okay, um, thanks for your comments. Um, I think long-term a dream would be to add to our platform a place where you could add your own challenge card. We even thought about having contests, like let's say Andrea, your class and a whole bunch of you wanna participate in a classroom uh, competition that we do. Uh, and we ask students to submit their own challenge card and we pick the top one and we add it to the deck. I think that's always been like, a, that would be a great idea. So if any, 
any of you want to participate in that kind of competition, please let us know either in the chat or email us. We've always thought about running that, we just never got around to it, but um, that's really how a lot of the cards were built. Like we started with 24 and then we got a ton of feedback from students, from educators like yourselves that helped us expand the deck. So we want to keep that going. We thought about doing a contest as a formal way of acknowledging that. So please let us know. Um, and um, yeah, I think ultimately if we have that as part of the platform somehow in the long term, that would be great. Hey, that's it. We're 59 minutes. Uh, thank you for the hour that you invested of time. Um, even more importantly than the hour, I can't wait to see what happens when you do this activity with your students. I want to say a huge thank you for being that key person that helps them move away from deciding and towards exploring. You're changing their lives in the short term for the better and in the long term for the better. And I'm really grateful that you're doing that. Um, we're going to organize another one of these webinars uh, in the future. Uh, Jasmine and Kemi, could you please put our you know what, I can do it. Um, we've got a nice little Google form. If ever you want to send us ideas about uh, what you want to see in a future webinar, if you want to get in touch with us, there's our information there. And uh, we always love hearing from you. So thanks for coming today and see you next time. And I'm going to stick around for two minutes if anyone has questions, comments, and wants to chat more. But thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hi, Marina. Hi. JB, I actually have a question. I had a hard time to use uh, your TED Talks with the college students uh, for one reason or another, well, for various reasons. Um, so maybe I thought maybe it would be you would be able to sort of record um, a video uh, for college students. And why I'm saying that, because we normally we have students who are fresh out of school, but also we have career changers, we have post-grad students. So they cannot really relate to videos when you're talking about high school students only. So if it is possible, probably I would later use uh, a video if you would be talking about these kind of things. Um, besides, I'm introducing this concept to my colleagues in non-profit organizations in Toronto who work with immigrants. So people who come here not always can pursue their original profession. So how it or how it relates to those mature career changes. Yeah, well, your, your comment resonates with me, Marina, because the TEDx talk if you listen to it literally, it is for uh, you guys. It's for dream enablers. It's for educators. It's for parents. So, so I'm I'm with you. That's the language that I use, and um, I eventually would love to make a version that is directed at the individual. It could be uh, students or or people at large, and um, you know that we did the TEDx talk the week. Uh, of COVID, like uh, seven days or six days later, it was COVID and then the world was over. So um, now that things are opening up again, I'd love to do an in-person session because I think just me on a screen, uh, it just won't have the same impact. So I'm going to try to find a venue, whether it's a school or, or somewhere else where there's people there so that it's more dynamic and you see the nervousness and the laughs and the stuff like that. So uh, I don't know if it'll be a, I don't think it'll be a TEDx, but we'll, we'll create another version that's more about the individual. Mm -hmm. I hope that's yeah. going to help. Yeah, it will help. It will help because really, well, first of all, one of my um, areas of uh, re responsibility, let's say, we all have uh, like side portfolios. So uh, my area is international students. And majority of them already have some university background, some uh, work experience background. So, and and sometimes they take it personally. It, it, they take it personally and think that we sort of talk to them like condescending. And I don't. I want to avoid that as much as possible because I remember myself being a new immigrant. And whoever was uh, sounding condescending, it, uh, it, it really upset me. <laughs> yeah.
because they came as a mature person. So that's that's another reason why my request came out because really in especially in Toronto. Yeah. Fifty percent probably of the population are immigrants. Yeah. So it would be very, very in demand video. What's your world like right now, Marina, in terms of in-person virtu versus virtual? My assumption is that you're still everything virtual, but how We're close... still working from home, yeah. uh, but as of January, we're starting hybrid. So yeah. two, 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 three times a week, we're going to be on campus. However, all um, student appointments and on, uh, in-class facilitations are going to be still online. Got it. Well, listen. So we're going to be present, then... but... <laughs> The next time when the world opens up again, especially in Toronto, because it has opened up in other places, I'm going to tell you when I come to Toronto and let's let's try to do something at George Brown in person, make a video uh, with some cool people. How's that? Oh, that's, that sounds really great. Sounds really great. great. So Lovely. maybe we'll invite co-op officers from Center for Business and other schools. That would be really great. We can invite, yeah. if you have a video, like a student video program, we could invite them as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that would be their project, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. That sounds really great. Okay, thank you, JP. Thank, thank you, you Maria. I love the concept. i really sorry. I see you. You cannot see me. I don't know, for some reason. No, I can see you. Before. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I I started I was I was very skeptical let's say in the beginning I'm sort of an old dog um, but as I started using it and I've seen the impact and uh, now I'm facilitating workshops I'm performing that uh, face off um, challenge card uh, challenge uh, during the classes it's amazing it works like a charm this is exactly one of my challenges i mean challenges of of my choice would be the meaningful making meaningful experience for people and that's exactly exactly goes in line with with this challenge for me so thank you very much thank you i'm thrilled to hear you say that i appreciate the positive feedback yeah it is very positive okay so thank you very much jp i don't want to keep you any longer it was great workshop again Thank you. Take care. Bye. Hey, Julia, should we set up a time to talk, just you and I, about um, your idea? I mean, that would be great. I just wanted to kind of toss it out there. Um, great. Yeah, let's do that. I would love to because I, I kind of pitched it to them and they seemed really interested. And so to basically almost like the South Florida thing that you guys did for majors, but actually having businesses from the community who are chamber members come out and bring the students as well and kind of a similar format. So it's I like just it. I remember idea. your idea. It's great. It's a great idea. What's the best way for me to help? Um, I, I just, I think I need to talk to them a little bit more, but I just trying to make sure that I, I have a firm hold on it because I'm new to the process. Yeah. And so um, just making sure that I'm presenting it correctly essentially, um, is, is probably my biggest hesitation. Um, on, on the other hand, there's another little piece that I didn't kind of want to get everybody necessarily involved in, and that's how to get from the top three challenge cards to the organizations. And, and there's a little bit of a gap in my understanding on how to guide students there, but it may be in the educator's guide, which I now have a link to. So I will, uh, I'll take that, a look at that as well. So yeah, please check it out. If it's not, send me an email, let me know. And for okay. your event, keep me posted. Like if you end up writing a description or if they ask you for a proposal for the event and you want a second set of eyes, like send it to us, like we'll look at it and we'll send you ideas, comments and stuff like that. That would be amazing. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank care. you Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Hey, John.